Beneath the cold, grassy hills of the Yorkshire Dales, disaster struck a group of nine cavers during their exploration of the Gaping Gill cave system. The United Kingdom's cave rescue organization was worn out from a year filled with tragedy. The year was almost over. Rescuers were looking forward to a better year, but on December 21st, 2019, they were called to the Gaping Gill Cave one more time. Did rescuers end their year with a victory, or were more lives claimed by the UK's dark tunnels? Find out as we explore the Gaping Gill Cave Rescue. Before we dive into the video, I want to take a moment to thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel. Our subscriber rate has grown from 8% to 13%, which is truly amazing. If you're new here, simply click the subscribe button, like this video, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest uploads. Now let's get into the video. The group of nine began their trip to Gaping Gill by departing on the nearly three-mile hike north of the village of Clapham. Along the way, the cavers passed by the Ingleboro Show Cave, which has introduced countless families and curious explorers to the world of caving. Many cavers have started their hobby at Ingleboro before moving on to try real caving in the neighboring Gaping Gill system. There are 21 different entrances to Gaping Gill, with many requiring SRT, or single rope techniques to descend and ascend the cave's multiple vertical sections. Reaching the main entrance of Gaping Gill, the cavers saw flat rocks interspersed with veins of grass that ended at a large crack. On the other side, steep, grassy hills terminated at stone ledges covered in moss. The nearby Fellbeck stream flowed into the cave. The flow of water changes with the seasons, but it was abnormally active for that time of year. Above the sinkhole, a wooden fence blocked the area off from the rest of the plains to prevent pigs or other livestock from sliding into the pit. Gaping Gill is frequented by the Bradford Pothole Club and the Craven Pothole Club, and these groups host a yearly winch meet, allowing visitors to enter the cave safely. Other cavers from far and wide can also check out the cave during this event, and tents are set up along the river. The caving clubs have strict policies for the event to prevent accidents. Even though it's much more dangerous than a show cave, people still come from all over just for the winch ride into the main room. The winch hung above a 322-foot chasm that looked endless from the pit above. On the ride down, one of Gaping Gill's many waterfalls misted the cavers while the grind of the metal device clanged in their ears as they descended. At the bottom of the winch, visitors can experience the layered rock of the massive main chamber of the cave and marvel at the largest unbroken waterfall in England, which is nearly double the height of Niagara Falls. These photo spots are great for visitors and cavers alike, but Gaping Gill's multiple large waterfalls can also be deadly under the wrong conditions. Cavers who travel to truly explore Gaping Gill are also required to have public liability insurance from the British Caving Association in case of disasters. Years back, the first person to descend the crack had to call off the expedition when he noticed his rope was tearing apart as it scraped against the stone, an ominous beginning to a cave that so many dare to explore. The group of nine cavers split into teams of two so that it could cover more ground. Each group was supposed to explore different passages of Gaping Gill, but one pair of 22-year-old men were trying to get the most out of this trip to Gaping Gill. They couldn't see it all before their cutoff time, but they were surely going to try. From the enormous main shaft of Gaping Gill, the cavers could go through four different passages. Two passages connect to a junction which winds down to the southeast passage. This route is mostly small tunnels, requiring cavers to crawl or duck if they're short enough. Turning north at the next T-intersection takes cavers to the Sand Cavern, where the sharp stone jutting out from the wall looks eerie bluish-green in the dim yellow light of headlamps. The Sand Cavern connects to the Stream Chamber and Stream Passage, which are normally very wet. During the winter, these routes could be dangerously cold. A separate passage to the east takes cavers through a long crawl to a large circular tunnel called Hensler's Series, which goes south into another stream. The longest route heads east from the main shaft. On the east slope, boulders reach the ceiling, which sometimes block the routes beyond this area. This section has had multiple breakdowns, and there's no telling when another avalanche of boulders could break apart and block the passage once more, trapping or crushing cavers deep underground. If cavers can traverse the passages on this side, They'll move through the mud hall and avalanche pot before traveling down sections that go all the way to Ingleboro. However, 
few attempt that trip because it requires cave diving in dangerously tight tunnels. After the pairs of cavers all finished their initial exploration of Gaping Gill, they all turned around to meet up back at the main chamber. They each crawled and dug their way back through the tunnels. The way back was harder because water was slowly turning the dirt into mud, which filled the tunnels and made it hard to grip the stone. Pair after pair heard the sound of the waterfall and felt a breeze rushing past them as they returned to the main chamber. This massive room would be almost twice as large if Caver somehow removed all the boulders and stone stacked dozens of feet high below them. One of the Cavers couldn't help but feel uneasy as they stomped their way through the crunchy pebble-covered room. The floor below could have a hole from the waterfall, and it could give way at any moment, creating a funnel of rock that would drag them down, crushing and burying them alive. Once the last group arrived, the team had a break, talked, did a head count, and filed in a line toward their scheduled exit point. Now, instead of going back up the main pitch, they were headed to the bar pot entrance. To get there, the nine cavers went back to the southeast passage before descending through rooms below what's known as the flood entrance. Then, just past that area, they would have to ascend a number of pitches to exit bar pot. Instead of splintering into pairs, they were all supposed to follow the same route. So it should have been a straight shot out of the cave. But that's when everything went all wrong. Bar Pot was a popular entrance and exit to Gaping Gill, but these two adventurous cavers wanted to try something new. After all, part of the thrill of caving is the exploration. These two took a turn, believing this route would eventually connect with the same path the rest of the group was taking. Their route ended up taking a lot longer than they expected, but they weren't sure why. Meanwhile, the main group had a tough time. Bar Pot has several dangerous sections, including a gap that can be covered by water from the flood entrance, a 108-foot climb done with ropes, then a tricky climb with steep walls that leads to another 46-foot tall shaft. Along the way, they had to traverse tight wedges with water trickling down the smooth rocks, which made it nearly impossible to find stable hand or footholds. Once on top of the second pitch, the main group had to conquer another steep crawl before they could finally exit Gaping Gill. As they climbed out of Bar Pot, the water flowing down started to get worse. It became harder to see the path above as streams flowed over each of the cavers. The caver at the end of the line was getting anxious as water slowly filled the chasm below and started climbing up his boots. It was this person's job to de-rig the ropes on the way up so they could take all their gear with them on the way out. All of the cavers were tired, and the person taking down the ropes was in a hurry, fearing the dangerously high water. Once they wrapped up the de-rigging, the group assumed that everyone had already exited, and they walked back to their camp. Eventually, their hearts sank as they realized the pair of 22-year-olds were still below ground in Gaping Gill and above ground, rain started to pour onto the Yorkshire Dales. After the two men recognized part of the cave from the map, they realized they had missed the turn from the main into Mud Hensler's Crawl, which leads down to the South Hensler's Crawl and connects to the Bar Pot area. Instead, they went down Avalanche Pot and took a right turn down the Far East Tunnel. At that point, they were also aware that water levels were quickly rising inside the cave. Their best chance to make it out of Gaping Gill alive was through Corky's Pot. Corky's Pot has seven vertical climbs with ropes, making it a difficult journey. The cavers were able to climb the first wall, the 131-foot Vindication Pitch, but they ran into trouble further up. The entrance to Corky's Pot has been reinforced with a tube that sticks out of the ground like a well. The cover on top has holes so water can get through, and without the grass and rocks to soak up some of the runoff, the tube funnels water directly into the cave. As they crested another ledge, they found water rushing from above had completely drenched the ropes and flooded the narrow chambers near the surface. The path through Corky's Pot was blocked. It took the cavers a long time just to reach Corky's Pot through the much longer and more arduous path that they traveled, and now they knew they were late. They realized their mistake, and they took the long path back to the main room. The whole way through, water continued to chill them to their cores. The possibility of drowning 
was sinking in, and they raced through the cave as fast as they could. They eventually reached the bar pot shaft, where there are other cavers had exited. The two men turned the corner, hoping to see someone waiting for them, but there was no one there. The situation was even worse than they imagined. They looked up in horror. Their team took the ropes. They were trapped in gaping gill. The time was 12.05 a.m. when the concerned group of cavers above ground made the call to the cave rescue organization. In 2019, the CRO had more body recovery missions than any other year in the history of the organization. In response to their year of misfortune, the CRO invested in new off-road vehicles to assist in further missions. Luckily for the two lost cavers, they brought out their new Honda Pioneer ATV for the first time during this rescue. This rugged off-road vehicle has independent front and rear suspension for tackling the rocky terrain of the Yorkshire Dales. It can hold up to a thousand pounds on its tilt bed, and it can tow another 2,500 pounds. This new tech investment paid for itself on this first mission, but would they be hauling back two chilly but thankful cavers or two bodies? The CRO team parked their larger Land Rover at Tro Gill, which is a nearby rocky valley, and got ready for their life-saving operation. During all previous rescues, the team would have to carry their heavy equipment, including rows of anchors, metal clips, ropes, wire ladders, stretchers, helmets, food, hammers, power tools, and sometimes even scuba equipment from the Land Rover all the way to the various cave entrances, which could be miles away. The Yorkshire Dales National Park is a vast stretch of empty plains and rural farmland. Many of the caves are located well off the beaten path, and during storms, the few dirt and gravel roads that stretch into the park can easily get flooded. The caves of the Yorkshire Dales are spread out all across the park, and some systems, like the Gaping Gill Cave, have multiple entrances. Their new ATV could quickly ferry this heavy gear to and from different cave entrances, which saved precious time as the rescuers walked for almost two miles to reach the cave entrances. Since the rescuers didn't have to carry as much gear, they didn't expend any of their own energy on the walk to the cave, which was a relief. Who knows what dangers they could face. They also had split into teams to cover more ground, so the team controlling the ATV also doubled as a communication hub to relay info between the various teams in case cell reception was lacking out in the countryside. The controllers of the operation analyzed the layout of the cave and the route the cavers had traveled. They realized that one wrong turn could have sent them along the path to Corky's Pot, so they started their search there. Other teams went to the Bar Pot entrance to check there. As the first team squeezed into the Corky's Pot entrance, they immediately realized there was a problem. Melting snow created high water flow into the cave, and it was made even worse by rainfall. The CRO tried to explore Corky's Pot, but the flooding was too dangerous. They retreated to the surface to come up with a different plan. Meanwhile, the bar pot team was able to slip down the crack and begin rigging their lines in the rain. This team was going much more slowly than the Corky's pot team. So far, this path looked like it was safe to travel for now, but it would take a while to move safely through the treacherous pitches. As time dragged on, the conditions inside and outside of Gaping Gill worsened. The controller decided they needed more rescuers if they were going to save the two missing cavers in time. They called for backup from the Upper Warfidel Fell Rescue Association. Minutes later, the first rescuers touched down below the bar pot entrance. They readied themselves for the worst. If any of the passages here were blocked, they were in for a large-scale rescue that could take days and the men might not make it out alive. The rescuers continued to venture into the dark depths below the Yorkshire Dales, and before long, they were shocked to find the two missing cavers. Rescuers had half expected them to search for another exit after seeing that Barpot was de-rigged, but they did the right thing. The cavers could have looked for a different exit, and if they got lucky, they could have dodged the floods and made it out safely on their own, but the experience of the rescue team in Corky's Pot proved that that would have been a risky plan that could have led to their death by drowning or by exposure to the elements. Instead, the safest plan was to stay put in a place along their scheduled route. Luckily, the spot they chose to rest was sheltered from the pouring water. The CRO's new equipment and their ability to cover more ground helped rescuers reach the cavers before their situation could deteriorate. They got to them so fast that they weren't in any risk of starvation or exposure. So, instead of using stretchers, 
the two cavers were led out of the cave on their own accord. Shortly before, they climbed through the muck and grime and felt the breeze of the sky once more, the backup rescuers arrived at the base camp. While they couldn't get additional volunteer hours logged, they were relieved that the rescue seemed to be a success. But of course, they didn't want to get too optimistic. They'd let their guard down only when they came face to face with the missing cavers to confirm they were safe. The CRO Land Rover was waiting to take the pair to the village of Clapham to rest their nerves. The other seven cavers from the group were still waiting above ground at the Operations Command Center with the controller and other CRO rescuers. The lost cavers' friends celebrated their safe return, and they had some classic tea and biscuits, or cookies as they're called overseas. Once everyone was together again, the rescuers could breathe easy and celebrate their own successful rescue. Unfortunately for the two rescued cavers, their nightmares weren't over. Just one month later, the pair would find themselves in a dire situation once again below a different Yorkshire Dales cave. Subscribe to the channel to see if these two cavers survived two cave rescues in just two months. How would you celebrate a reunion with your friends after that frightening ordeal? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want to hear about more UK cave rescues.